Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going over my favorite products for the month of October. So if you want to see what I was using this month, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And the month of October was the month of eyeshadow palettes and highlighters, I feel like. The majority of today's video, I'm going to be talking about the eyeshadows and highlighters that I've been loving because those are what really have stood out to me. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with my channel of the month first because I always forget to add this on to the end. I have discovered a wonderful luxury channel. Her name is Allison Chase. She is based in Montreal. I absolutely love her luxury reviews. Now, she's even more luxury than I am. You know, I'm more like high-end, sometimes luxury. She's definitely a luxury girl. She knows herself. I love when she reviews Chanel. I believe she speaks French because she pronounces these Chanel names correct. You guys know how I obliterate them when I try and say French names. And with her reviews, I feel like she goes beyond just the product. She tells a story and just the way that she describes products is so lovely. And she is a makeup artist and esthetician, so she definitely has a lot of information to give. So definitely go check her channel out. I've been watching her luxury reviews. I really enjoy them and I think that you guys will as well. Like I said, I especially watch her for Chanel. She's my favorite Chanel reviewer. I don't really purchase Chanel on my channel, but I still like to watch the reviews. So she's kind of my go-to for Chanel. The first favorite of the month, it's not a product, but it is a skincare fridge. This is from Kulada. Not Kulada, like what they sell at Duncan. <laughs> Kaluli. Excuse me. And they were kind enough to send this fridge over to me, but I actually had purchased one for my mom last year for Christmas. And I had told her right before they had sent me an email that I would think I was gonna buy myself one soon because I was really jealous. I wanted my skincare to cool my skin. I wanted it to be that luxury experience with the cooling sensations. And then like right on time, they actually emailed me and I was like, perfect. And I've been loving it. I have it stocked with different skincare items, different sprays and whenever I just need to pick me up something nice and cool or when I'm putting my face mask on at night it just feels really good to have the nice cool skincare I believe and correct me if I'm wrong I believe skincare does last longer when you refrigerate it did I make that up I don't know <laughs> but I feel like it does but anyways if you're looking to amp up your skincare game with a totally unnecessary product I recommend getting a skincare fridge I love mine let's go into some new brushes that I've been loving November November 1st, Refer actually launched their holiday collection. And first of all, their holiday collection comes in this new plastic case. So before I think it was cardboard, I love the plastic. This is great for travel. I'm really excited about it. And they launched three new brushes in their collection. And I gave you a demo today when I'm doing all of my tutorials. But the brush numbers are 23, 24, 25. And I believe until November 8th, let me double check on that. Yes, November 8th. These are gonna be on sale for $116. So this set is going to be $216, but I guess for a launch celebration, they will be $116. So if you are interested in this set, now is the time to get them. I am affiliated with them, so I do receive a small commission if you purchase through my link, but don't feel obligated to do so. I always say the way I would describe Refer is an affordable way to get high quality Japanese brushes. I often get in at my inbox are these brushes really worth it what's better Sonia G Wayne Goss or Refer and they're all different I would say I would definitely look into Refer for eye brushes they have the absolute best shapes and even though I love Sonia G face brushes the Sonia G face brushes are buckaroos that's why I don't have very many of her brushes so that is why I much prefer Refer because I feel like they're more affordable and you still get the Japanese brush experience so in the collection you have 23 and this is the the brush that I am the most excited about. I did a little bit of a demo on my stories for you guys already, but if you are a Refer fan, you've probably grown to love the number three brush, which was before the tiniest pencil brush we all had ever used. I have very small eyes and I like it doing more precise looks sometimes. And the new 23 is even smaller, you guys. I am so excited about this brush. If you are gonna pick up one brush from the new collection, I would recommend the 23. It is 
so tiny. Today I used it for my inner corner color. I used it to apply a really thin line of my dark shadow along my lower lash line for really subtle definition, like really, really thin and precise and I loved it. And I didn't get this on camera, but I used a coal liner on my upper lash line today and I used this pencil to kind of smudge it out a little bit and pull the wing out a little bit more. So I love this brush for smudging, for doing really tight lines, for doing inner corner, or if you get into cut creases, this is perfect for getting that last bit of concealer right on the line, very, very precise. In love with this brush. In the collection, there's also number 24. I would say this one's probably my least favorite in the collection. I would use this to blend out cream contour. This is the best use for it, in my opinion. It's a bit more pinched than some of their other brushes, and it does have more of a dense feel. I used it today to set my under eyes, which wasn't my favorite. I think it's a little bit too dense for that. I also used it for highlights, which I liked that more than I was expecting. Because it's so big and dense, it actually doesn't put on too much colors. So it's perfect for those gelée highlight formulas because it is a denser brush, but it also doesn't apply too much in the area. It actually put a pretty smooth application on. So that's another potential use of it. But my other favorite brush has to be the 25. Again, we all love a big fluffy brush. And this is a little bit longer and less fluffy compared to their other big face brush that they have. But it really is perfect for my smaller face for still wanting a fluffy brush. And I just love it. It applied a really soft layer of bronzer onto my face today. So I think this is a really good collection. And by the way, this big brush, I believe is like $112. So if you can get the whole set for $116, I don't know how Refer does it, but really great brush set. I've been loving the different shapes that they have. So let's move in to powder. There is a face powder that I've been loving from Nabla Cosmetics. I did a video using a full face of Nabla Cosmetics. There was a lot of amazing products but one that really stood out to me that I've never heard anybody talk about is their close-up smoothing pressed powder. Now I use mine in the shade light and I love this for setting the center of my face. I feel like it is such a smoothing powder. I will say don't use this with a heavy duty foundation or anything because I do think you can over apply with this powder. I would recommend to use a more fluffy brush because if you do apply too much of this I feel like it can give you that cakey look but when you apply just a little bit. It really smooths the skin. It awakens the under eyes and it is just so blurring and soft focus on the face. But I do like that you can pack on some pigment with this product. This was something that I was not expecting to love so much. I really feel like I found a hidden gem with this powder. It's really amazing. So if you happen to come across Nabla Cosmetics and you find this powder, give it a try. I think it's really good. The next products that I've been loving, I picked picked up the Wayne Goss Weightless Veil Blush Palettes and I've been really enjoying them. I'm wearing the Coral Rose Blush today and I do think the blush is nice. It's not the blush formula that's knocking my socks off. It's the highlight formula. Again, I like Coral Rose. It's a really soft color. I think if you are a more fair complexion, you're going to love Coral Rose because for me, it does require some building up. So this is the perfect blush that's not going to look too overly done on somebody with a more fair complexion but I really love the highlight more than anything. I feel like it's such a smoothing formula and I think in my initial review, I wasn't as impressed with the highlighter, but the longer I have it, the more beautiful I've really seen it, especially out in daylight. And I feel like it really sinks into the skin very well. The other color that I have is Blush Peony. This one is a little bit more garish, but in a good way uh, because it is more pink. I like this blush more because it's a bit brighter on me and I love this highlight, but it is kind of that pink pink shift. So I don't necessarily love that pink shift for every day, but the formulation is beautiful. And if I really want a nice, bright, popping pink cheek, I love this blush peony. So I ended up loving these way more than I thought I would. I ended up using them way more than I thought I would as well, because in my initial review, while I thought they were nice, I definitely think they are a bit overpriced. You get a lot of product. That's why they are the price that they are. I would have liked these to have less product and be less money because they are 
quite expensive for two shades but the product itself is really beautiful so if you think you are going to use these colors a lot i've definitely been enjoying these so a couple more highlighters like i said this was the month of highlight we're going to start off with the one that i am wearing today and this is the natasha denona i need a nude glow this is a wonderful luxury highlighter that has come out this is probably my favorite highlighter that natasha denona has come out with to date it is quite blinding like i said i got a lighter wash of it it doesn't really emphasize texture as well i had a few of you who were concerned that maybe this would be a little bit too deep of a highlighter i feel like it pulls brighter on the cheek than it does on a swatch now i can't speak on somebody who does have a lighter skin tone from me just because uh, i haven't tried this on anybody but myself but i do find it to have quite a light cast and i don't notice any dark cast over on my cheeks when i am face on so at least if you're my skin tone this definitely works i've seen this work on deeper skin tones as well now i don't think it's as good as my charlotte tilbury that i've been raving about but it's another great highlight release and i'm very very happy with this highlighter is it anything any of us need no but i think natasha did a really good job with this and i've really been liking using this the other highlighters that i've been loving are the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palettes. These get my stamp of approval. They came out with one other color, but for my skin tone and what I thought I would use more, I picked up Rose Gold and Pure Gold. And Rose Gold is my personal favorite because I do love a pinky blush and I feel like these really flatter a pinky blush. And you guys know I love the formulation of these. I think they are absolutely stunning. So I knew I had to pick these up. This one is the Pure Gold if you're into more golden colors. I don't think you need all of them. I would say pick whatever colors that you think you would use the most don't order these online only pick them up in store though because these have had all kinds of problems with shipping i think everybody has had issues where these were either shattered or they're actually like peeling up i ordered these from dior first and by the way returning it was a nightmare i love ordering from dior but i don't think i will be ordering powder products from them anymore just because returning them is a whole thing if it comes shattered i ended up reordering these from Sephora and while they didn't come shattered they still came almost like out of the pan and I had to squish them down it was very very odd and I know almost everybody who has also ordered these has also had the same problem so please only pick these up in stores online it's kind of a hot mess but they are a gorgeous formula I love the new colors that they have and like I said there's so many good highlighters that have recently come out I don't know why everybody's coming out with highlighters but they are killing it all right I have eyeshadow palettes for you and the majority of them are Pat McGrath because she came out with so many palettes this month. I believe the Mega Mothership Celestial Divinity came out last month. I didn't really end up using it until the next month. It came out the very, very end. So I feel like I've had this for a while and I've talked about it plenty, but come to find out, I haven't featured it in a favorites yet. So I had to. I really love this palette. I did say in my initial review that I don't think you need it, obviously, if you have the two original Star Wars palette. If you missed that, I did give my Star Wars palettes to my mom so that I could purchase this big palette and it not be a complete waste for me. So now I no longer have duplicates in my collection. But anyways, I really love this palette. I don't think it's a perfect palette. If I was curating this palette, I would have done things a little bit different, added more mattes, added a few other color stories because I do feel like sometimes it can be a little bit hard to come up with a look for this palette because there are so many shades and I don't really love the way that it's laid out either i think it makes it more difficult to create a look but that being said i have not come up with a look that i didn't absolutely love with this palette i just love the tones in here i love the finishes in here i love the quality in here i think it is a stunning palette i highly recommend it if you want to try out pat mcgrath this is a great way to do it as well now it's not as good as a regular big mothership in my opinion just because of the lack of special shades which i think are so important to the pat mcgrath brand but I love this palette. I think it's amazing and I think it's a really great value. And then of course she also came out with her smaller palettes in the holiday collection and Fantasia Fleur I ended up really kind of not being that into. I think it's pretty but it's not something that I would recommend because these quads are quite expensive though I do highly recommend the remaining two. I think they are great. Now as far as the Risqué Rose I think if you collect Pet McGrath this probably is the one that you have have the most duplicates of because we have seen a hot pink we have seen a matte brown from pat mcgrath and again i don't think 
this shade in particular is anything really special. The only truly special one is Lavendering in here, but it is a gorgeous palette. If you don't have a lot from Pat McGrath, I really recommend this one. I think it is absolutely stunning, but if you do have a lot of Pat McGrath, you could definitely pass on this, but I have been loving it. I love her little quads. I love getting a curated Pat McGrath palette that's a little bit more easy to transport, even though I don't leave my house, but I still do recommend this one. The point that I wanted to get across was Fantasia Fleur was not a favorite of mine this month, but I think this one is my favorite of the three quads. This is Interstellar Icon, and from what you guys told me, I believe Blue Blood is actually already in the... I can't... I remember what it's called. It's in that palette. It's not the Subversive palette. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna post a picture of it. I don't know why I'm blanking. I love Pat McGrath, but the names of her palettes, I can never remember. So I call myself a stan. <laughs> I'm the worst stan. I can't remember the names of her palettes. But Blue Blood, I do believe is a repeat, which is a shame because it is kind of the standout in this palette, but it's such a gorgeous shade. I think overall, just as a quad and the looks that you can create, this one is my favorite one to create looks with. It's my favorite curation of colors. Deep, vampy eyes but you can also get a Pat McGrath look with this one. I would say this one's probably the one that I recommend the most out of the holiday collection. I think it's the most stunning. I think it's the most unique. I think in my review, I was more so leaning towards Risqué Rose because she had that very special lavendering formula. But I think the longer that I've had these, I just like the colors in the Interstellar quad more. Moving on to the eyeshadow palette that I'm wearing today. And this one was a pleasant surprise. I was not interested in picking this palette up. I did it for review purposes for you guys, but I ended up really loving the Rare Beauty Confident Energy Palette. Now they did come out with a more purple based one, which if you know me, usually those are the colors that I gravitate towards, but there's something about this palette that is so much more unique and inspiring to me. And these really knocked my socks off. They are only $25 and I find the quality of them to be really, really good. It is an all shimmer palette, but I'm using nothing but this palette on my eyes today and I think it looks stunning. So Confident Energy, I really love because if you use these crazy colors here, they are so vibrant on the eyes. Seriously, the quality is amazing. The pigmentation is amazing. They blend like a dream. But I did want to show you that you can really create a neutral look as well, but you can also get some seriously beautiful pops of color. And I just love the quality of this because the pops are so vibrant on your eyes and I really just love the tones that she picked. The biggest surprise of 2020 for me because I was not interested in this palette one bit. It's so good, especially for the price. All right, two more makeup items. We're going to talk about the lashes that I'm wearing today. So this is from a company that sent me a PR package a while back, but I've been wearing these lashes nonstop. So the company is called Base Blue Cosmetics and they're actually based in DC, which I think is really cool because I live about an hour outside of DC, but they had some lashes that looked really gorgeous and one of the lashes that was in their collection is called Treepy and I've been wearing these lashes non-stop. Slightly raise your eyes because there is a little bit more thickness on the outer part of the lashes. They're dramatic while still being wearable so you can wear this out. I mean I don't know maybe this is too much for you but I feel comfortable wearing these lashes out. They look extra glam without being too much like a Lily Miami lash and they have a really nice thin band so they're very easy to apply and they're not very expensive either so I actually think I'm gonna purchase a few more of these for myself because they're the perfect amount of dramatic while still being something I feel comfortable leaving my house in so these are really really good lashes random but I love them all right so let's move into our final product it is the lipstick that I'm wearing so this month Charlotte Tilbury came out with a super nudes collection which wasn't very nude in my opinion she did have like one shade that was a really great nude for medium skin tones and then we had um, this red shade but what I loved about this collection is that you do have a little bit more of a bejeweled top it's very very subtle not too much different from her line but it is a little nice touch I do love this is the shade super starlet again don't know why this collection was called super nudes this is not nude on anybody it's like a red but I found my red for the holiday 2020 season which is really disappointing because that means I found the red to wear around my house over the holidays 
I love this color on me. It's not too bright of a red in my opinion. It has a little bit of depth to it. I mean, you guys can see it here. I think it is a stunning color. I did use ColourPop Overtime Lip Liner just to lightly line the edges, but I love this little bit of a deeper red here for the holidays. It is the Kissing Formula, so it's gonna be really moisturizing on the lips, and it has a little bit of a glow to it, and this is the red that I will be wearing a lot this holiday season. I absolutely love it. That is all I have as far as my makeup favorites. I do have an everyday earring that I wanted to share with you guys. You guys know how much I love jewelry, so much so that I even got into making it over the last few months over quarantine. These I did not make, but I've been wearing these in my ears for days, and these are by Ana Luisa, and they are these paperclip earrings. I've never had anything like these, and they're just so simple and so beautiful. Now, I am currently in a long-term partnership with Ana Luisa so that means I work with them periodically throughout the year. This video is not sponsored. They did send me these earrings. Nobody told me to talk about them. I've just been loving them. I really like the quality of Ana Luisa stuff. I have sensitive ears but they're not super sensitive like some people's. Like when I wear fake jewelry I can wear them during the daytime but I absolutely cannot sleep in them because then it, when I wake up my ears are going to be quite irritated. My ears don't get irritated with these. I've been sleeping in them for the last four nights and my ears are still not irritated. So it's a great affordable piece for what it is. I've showered with them. They've been quite durable and I just think they're a really cute everyday piece. All right guys so that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to know what your favorites were this month. If you aren't subscribed to my channel I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one